MGTOW Masterpiece videos are made possible by excellence within the MGTOW community. Join our Renaissance project by submitting your own Masterpiece MGTOW video today. This is an essay submitted as coursework in a philosophy undergraduate program. During the last several decades, contemporary ethical theories have taken a surprising turn with the introduction of a feminist-oriented perspective. Although disagreement persists among feminist thinkers, one of the important aspects raised has been the distinction between the virtue of the public domain compared to those of the private domain. Traditionally, it has been a male-oriented perspective grounded in an ethic of justice that has taken precedent over an ethic emphasizing the importance of personal relations, caring, attentiveness, sensitivity, and intimacy. An ethic that incorporates these aspects has most commonly been referred to as an ethic of care. It all branches out from a well-known piece on women's moral development titled, In a Different Voice, by American psychologist Carol Gilligan. In the piece, Gilligan states that throughout history, women had fulfilled the majority of caretaking tasks within the private domain, whereas men had dominated the public domain. Such a viewpoint subsequently led to a reinforced idea that women should have to be confined to the home environment and that men should hold certain exclusivity over the realms of both politics and business. However, the advent of the Industrial Revolution brought with it a contemporary society where more freedom, comfort, Improved security and other additional opportunities now exist for such roles not to be so set in stone. Nevertheless, feminist thinkers influenced by the insights of Gilgan believe that such a sharp distinction still exists in the development of ethical theories today. They consider that the perspectives of men are at the forefront in the handling of moral dilemmas and that the concerns of women's caring in the private domain remain wholly unrepresented. In this essay, I take a closer look at the ethics of care, beginning with a basic overview of the theory including its more relevant features. Central to this overview will be Lawrence Kohlberg's stages of moral development, followed by a response from care regarding the stages of moral development. Subsequently, I will analyze the various similarities an ethic of care shares with the well-known Greek example of an ethic of virtue. The advantage of this similarity allows us to take into account the desirable virtues required for navigating both public and private life simultaneously. The inevitable challenge that arises, however, comes from a need to account for the difference between virtues presented in public and private life that may be desirable and undesirable. I suggest that the response rests in the need to address the so-called bad forms of care that arise when private virtues cause problems in public life. In 1981, psychologist Lawrence Kohlberg published a paper titled The Philosophy of Moral Development, Moral Stages, and the Idea of Justice. One of the primary goals was to present evidence regarding a person's justifications as to whether an action was morally right or wrong. The results were then categorized into a chart which illustrated the three levels and six stages of moral development. Semi-structured interviews were conducted by the interviewer to obtain information on which stage of moral reasoning a person would fall into through solving fictional moral dilemmas. One such dilemma was known as Heinz's Dilemma, which included the following problem. Heinz's wife was dying. The only way to save her rested in the hands of a pharmacist who was selling a life-saving drug. Heinz did not possess enough money to purchase the drug from the pharmacist. Inevitably, out of sheer desperation, Heinz decided to steal the drug from the pharmacist. Children of various ages were interviewed, and their responses to Heinz's dilemma illustrated their progression through the six stages of moral development. They were asked one simple question. Would it be wrong for Heinz to steal the drug from the pharmacist? An 11-year-old boy named Jake responded to the dilemma, stating that it would be obvious for Heinz to steal the drug, since it was a matter of principle, indicating a stage four or five of moral development. Amy, on the other hand, who was also 11 years old, gave a rather hesitant response to the dilemma. She stated that Heinz should have resolved the problem with the pharmacist through negotiation, indicating a stage three level of moral development, one focused primarily upon maintaining personal relationships with other people. 
Feminist thinkers influenced by the 1982 book written by Carol Gilligan titled In a Different Voice, Psychological Theory and Women's Development, opposed the distinction between Jake and Amy put forward in Kohlberg's Moral Stages of Development. They argue that Amy's assessment of Heinz's dilemma should not be seen as morally inferior in comparison to Jake's response. Amy was simply responding to the dilemma in accordance with an ethic of care instead of an ethic of justice. It is Jake who responded to the dilemma in a classically male fashion by focusing solely upon an imperative to address a conflict between life and property that can be resolved by a logical deduction. On the other hand, Amy's assessment of the dilemma is grounded in the notion of what Joan C. Tronto calls attentiveness, where caring implies some kind of ongoing responsibility and commitment. In the piece titled, What Can Feminists Learn About Morality from Caring? Tronto argues that attentiveness in moral theory becomes much more closely connected to the concrete needs of others. According to this perspective, an ethic of care is basically grounded in a different interpretation of the self, emphasizing the importance of intimacy and personal relationships over an obligation to act purely based on principle. Tronto brings to light the original meaning of care in English, where care meant a burden to care is to assume a burden. In a sense, the children's differing perspectives in resolving Hein's dilemma illustrated the two forms of moral decision-making that individuals undergo when assuming a burden during a time of desperation. Initially, it could be said that Amy's actions embody a caring perspective without question, while Jake's does not. However, upon closer inspection, Toronto clearly seems to account for this distinction when referring to the two types of caring, caring for and caring about. Jake's response to the dilemma is clearly grounded in a caring about, where the object being cared about in this case is the abstract notion of justice. Amy's response, on the other hand, is grounded in an attitude of caring for, where the physical, spiritual, intellectual, psychic, and emotional needs of others are responded to. It is through the process of eliminating the superiority of Jake's response in Kohlberg's theory of moral development that feminist thinkers highlight the perspective of care found within Amy's response to Heinz's dilemma. Contrasting the themes of Heinz's dilemma alongside the responses of Amy and Jake shows us certain similarities between an ethic of care and an ethic of virtue. In order to look into this further, we must first begin with a simple question. What exactly is an ethic of virtue and how is it similar to an ethic of care? An ethic of virtue or an Aristotelian virtue ethic is one of four main candidates of normative ethical theory. It considers a moral person as someone who possesses specific traits of character, for instance, courage, kindness, prudence, justice, and so on. Caring as a virtue, in turn, becomes the central character trait in this regard. Additionally, we should investigate the full definition of care. Drawing from several definitions stated by Toronto, Held, Noddings, and Kite, the definition of care can be summarized somewhat as follows. Care refers to a behavior apparent in the form of either labor or attitude whereby a burden of responsibility and commitment is redirected away from the self towards an individual in need of the care. An important aspect to note here is that the defining characteristic within the attitude of caring is that carers act on behalf of others' interests, but they also care for themselves. This notion of caring on behalf of others implies that there is a response within the ethic of care to understand the needs of those cared for, which requires an additional matter of feeling rather than a response from rational cognition. Recognizing the centrality of feeling to the ethic of care presents us with a certain challenge, assuming that, of course, feelings are not exactly the most reliable guides when it comes to developing a normative ethical theory. However, I will not discuss this challenge here, considering it is a hefty topic best explored another time. Instead, there is a need to focus upon how virtue ethics benefits in accommodating for the different virtues required for navigating both the public and private domains of life. Investigating the differences of virtues associated with public life compared to those of private life is a key component acknowledged by a large majority of past and present feminist thinkers. A movement beginning during the early 1960s across much of the Western world, which was later known as the Women's Liberation Movement, 
was among the first to generate significant social attention towards recognizing these differences of virtues. The narrative goes something like this. Throughout most of human history, women had fulfilled the large proportion of caretaking roles within the intimate private sphere. Men, on the other hand, had focused upon the public domain and presently still do. Such concrete differences in virtues subsequently led to an idea reinforced in part by social consensus that women should embrace home and hearth while men should embrace the realms of politics and business in the public sphere. It is the public life which requires of us virtues such as justice and beneficence, while the private life requires virtues such as caring and love. This is the crucial distinction. The challenge here rests upon whether or not it would be possible to incorporate the virtues of care taken from the intimate private spheres of life and introduce them successfully into the public domain. There are several important points to raise in this section. Firstly, there may be examples where the virtues of intimate, private, personal relations would be directly incompatible with those necessary for the public domain. Would these incompatibilities be easily observable or recognizable? If so, who or what would decide as to which virtues could be classified as desirable or undesirable for the public domain? I use the term desirable interchangeably here with the notion of a morally good virtue which is to be encouraged for benefiting both the self and others. The implications of these several points may be rather substantial. They point back towards the larger conflict that exists between an ethic of justice and an ethic of care, even though it is argued by Gilligan that both should be viewed with equal consideration. Hence, Gilligan's use of the metaphor regarding the ambiguous figure of the vase and the faces, where two distinct images exist but only one can be seen at a time. On the one hand, Held argued that justice should not have to be separated from care. However, within a family context, there can be care without justice, but no justice without care. This points to some form of imbalance between the amount of value each virtue possesses and its contributory role, which is dependent upon the context of a public or private domain. This theme will be discussed further alongside an example in the following paragraph. Nonetheless, Care is supposed to be the most deeply fundamental value that needs to be seen as a public concern, not relegated to the private responsibility of women. Understanding that this key component is inseparable from the rest of the ethic of care is crucial. It tends to be one of the major reasons as to why the ethic of care receives a considerable amount of attention in both the social and up until several decades ago, the philosophical discourse. Continuing on from the themes expressed in the previous discussion, we may be able to find an instance where a desirable virtue, commonly used in private life, conflicts and causes undesirable outcomes in public life. Take, for example, a scenario where a problem arises by caring about an individual in a manner that involves injustice. The most common example of this would include caring for an individual who is looking to rob a bank. It would appear as though caring about someone or something is not morally admirable unless such caring is tempered by other moral considerations. Immediately, what we should notice here is that such examples require of us to supplement an ethic of justice, since there is a need to find an immediate solution between the competing interests of two individuals. It may not be enough in such instances to simply refer exclusively to an ethic of care in order to solve the problem in question. This answer would seem to be in accordance with the desires of Gilligan, who clearly advocates for interwining both rather than endorsing one as superior over the other. The example of the bank robber may also highlight a concern found within Tronto's notion of attentiveness, which was discussed in the care response to Heinz's dilemma. Using the definition provided earlier in this paper, where care revolves around the activity or attitude of assuming a burden, it may appear that attentiveness has a significant cost when expressed in the public domain. This idea of cost tends to be interpreted primarily as a cost to the self, being sensitive and attentive towards other individuals in public life comes as a cost to fulfilling one's own needs and ensuring one's own security. Where there is potential for cost to the self rests a need to recognize and balance risk. Such an example may help to demonstrate why an ethic of care would require necessary assistance from an ethic of justice that adheres to strict principles. Overall, there are a number of similarities between an ethic of care and an ethic of virtue. A main advantage of this similarity is that an ethic of virtue seems well prepared to account for the differences between navigating both private and public life. 
This ability to account for the differences resonates well among feminist thinkers who argue that the traditional ethic of justice has taken precedent over an ethic highlighting the importance of caring roles and attentive behavior. The challenge rests in the need to incorporate intimate, caring virtues of the private sphere and successfully introduce them into the public domain, which has traditionally been dominated by a need for principle and justice. It appears as though a worthwhile response to the challenge would consist of addressing the so-called bad forms of care, or undesirable virtues that were demonstrated in the bank robber example. Alongside an ethic of care is a need to factor in the problem of injustice. This is required in order to find solutions to problems that arise when private virtues, such as caring, cause problems in public life. Ultimately, what this information means to the MGTOW movement will clearly differ from individual to individual. However, there's a common theme, a thread that has significant ramifications for how men navigate the public realms of life, such as politics, law, business, and sexual reproduction. Here, I would like to add that the most striking aspect of what I call the undesirable bad forms of care in the public domain coincide directly with the phenomenon Professor Jordan Peterson has been referring to in his lectures on the surge of authoritarianism and political correctness across the Western world. To quote Peterson directly, what I do see happening in our society is the rise of the Oedipal mother from a Freudian perspective. And an Oedipal mother is the mother that just won't distance herself enough from her child and wants to protect them from everything. And what she ends up doing is hollowing out their soul and transforming them into permanent infants. It is not a good thing. All of this comes down to the notion that for the first time in human history, we are witnessing what the desirable and undesirable aspects of female morality and an ethic of care are when expressed for all to see in the public domain. Like most great things, it is both fascinating and terrifying to watch. The End I wanted to inject some of my own thoughts on this essay as I had previously put out a series on feminist ethics. The first point to note is that there is no reconciling of a feminist ethic of care with an ethic of justice. The reason for this rests in the ontic priority of justice and care in both systems. In a virtue ethics, justice is the ordered conduct between people. Justice is the highest authority that governs the conduct between people. All other considerations are delegated to a distant second place. In an ethic of care, it is care that is given ontic priority. Care becomes the highest standard against all human interactions that are measured. As you can see, you cannot build a unified system when you have two masters. As such, it should be noted that the feminist ethic of care is a competing ethical normative model. Either the feminist ethic of care is correct or virtue ethics is correct. However, if the feminist ethic of care is correct, then it follows that there exist unjust human interactions that are moral. Now, I doubt anyone would accept this even at face value. In a virtue ethics, care, as a form of emotionally informed affectation, would fall under the virtue of fortitude. Though fortitude is a cardinal virtue, justice is not subservient to fortitude. As such, justice is fundamentally emotionally free. Therefore, in a virtue ethics, emotions have no bearing on justice, and it is to be guarded to ensure that emotions have no bearing on determining what is the correct ordered conduct between people. The best example of the feminist ethic of care in practice is the immigration policies of Sweden and Germany. Care is prioritized over justice. The final result will be that you end up with neither justice nor the resources to care for anyone at all.